Well, HIV is the most recent disease to affect millions. The oldest is probably malaria. There are Chinese medical texts from over 5,000 years ago that talk about malaria. And the symptoms are the same today as they were back then. Chills, fever, weakness, uh, inability to work or eat. And if you're undernourished or quite young, there's a good chance it will kill you. In fact, over 800,000 deaths a year are caused by malaria, and an additional burden from all the suffering from malaria. Now, this disease used to be all over the world, not just in the poor countries. In the United States, it was most severe in the, the Deep South, but it was also uh, significant here in Washington, D.C. In fact, there was a proposal that a wall at the height of the Washington Monument be built around the entire city to somehow uh, block it out. <laughs> so if you look at 1900, uh, the map of where malaria was, it was basically everywhere. In fact, it, was, it wasn't until a bit after 1900 that a British military doctor figured out that it was transmitted by these mosquito bites. So this terrible disease uh, received a lot of attention. And by 1970, the rich countries had made unbelievable progress. In fact, it was eliminated from the rich countries. How did this happen? Well, we had DDT as an insecticide. We had a number of drugs that were uh, quite effective. But once it was eliminated from these rich countries, uh, the energy dropped off. Uh, it was there in the poor countries, but there wasn't that kind of market demand. There wasn't the incentive. Uh, DDT uh, had side effects when it was used broadly, particularly in agricultural applications. And there started to be resistance, both to the insecticides and the popular drugs. And so government funding went away from these programs. And malaria, in fact, reached its peak death toll subsequent to 1970. So let's look at where we are today. Well, in the last decade, new energy has gone into uh, working on malaria, particularly investments by the U.S. government. Uh, there are new organizations like Malaria No More, Nothing But Nets, that are drawing in people to help with this cause. Uh, when M Melinda and I, a few years ago, had a meeting of malaria experts, uh, we raised in the discussion the idea of could it possibly be eradicated, you know, starting reducing the map but eventually getting all the countries. And people felt, yes, that is something that could eventually be done. The strategy today you see on this map is to take the countries in yellow and go all out to try to achieve local elimination. In the countries in red, where it's more difficult, the idea is to dramatically reduce the number of deaths, uh, to get new drugs out there and, and get other new interventions. So we have a long ways to go. But we are making substantial progress for the first time since the 1970s. The American funding is paying for a lot of things. It's paying for indoor spraying, uh, which again is, is using DDT but in a very focused way. It's paying for bed nets uh, that are, are very, very effective. And between 2004 and 2008, uh, Africa received over 190 million bed nets. Uh, they still need more. But that gets you to one for every four people in sub-Saharan Africa. And in the years ahead, we'll receive uh, total coverage. Now, when you get, go in with these interventions, what's the effect? It wasn't known for sure. There was a lot of hope that if you scaled up for a, a big community and did multiple things, that it would really bring the cases down. Well, in the last three years, that's what we've seen. In Rwanda, the cases are down 45%. In Cambodia, they're down over 50%. In Zambia, also over 50%. The Philippines, even more, 76%. And Eritrea, uh, down over 80%. And even in those countries, there's more that can be done. So I'm optimistic about this disease. We have not only the US government, but now uh, more nonprofits. We have drug companies uh, pitching in to help out with various things. The cost of the key drugs that are very effective will uh, continue to go down quite a bit. There's great work going on on a vaccine. In fact, there's a partially effective vaccine 
uh, going into late stage trials and hopefully would, would be available as a new tool within the next five years. And there's lots of uh, research that isn't proven yet, but, but some of which will give us new things. Uh, the idea of spatial repellents that don't require the indoor walls, that it just, uh, it, it's like a chemical window screen and it keeps the mosquitoes out. We're doing computer modeling, very sophisticated approach to understand exactly what we need to do to achieve these eliminations. And that's guiding us so that our investments are, are most effective. It's hard to predict when er an eradication might be possible. Now, year by year, we're going to make progress. And my work at Microsoft taught me that when you're making year by year progress, uh, sometimes people can expect too much in the short term, but they often underestimate what can happen as a result of those long-term efforts. And so here I'd say uh, it can't be eradicated in the short term. But in the long term, I do think this is a significant possibility.